Welcome to the Manufacturing Masters Podcast with your host, Allison DeFord. Hey, friend. You are probably on LinkedIn and using it to build a network, and maybe you're using it to generate leads. Has it been successful? Feel defeated or frustrated? I have got some exciting news for you. Today's guest is going to share with you his amazing referrals first approach to generating B2B leads on LinkedIn. None other than our resident expert on the Manufacturing Masters platform, Mr. Greg Michio, founder of Windbound and also an incredible content creator, marketer, and pal of mine. We had to have him back because he wrote an article recently and put out a newsletter and it talks about this process. And it struck me because I have used parts and pieces of this process myself, have recommended them to manufacturers. And I can tell you, this really works. It's going to save you and your salespeople, time, stress, sweat, and you're going to build trust so much faster by following this method. So everybody strap in. This is golden nugget after golden nugget. You're going to want to take some notes. Thanks for spending some time with Greg and I today. Everybody, here we grow. So everybody... I'm so excited to have with us today, my brother from another mother in the content world and marketing. Greg, I'm so stoked that you're here again. Thank you for the invite, Allison. It's always an honor. And I'm always like, like, as we were just talking before we came on the air, I'm like, really me? You want me to come on here, Allison? No, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I always love talking with you about marketing and everything. Well, me too. I mean, you and I could like talk for a week straight, I think. Um, but you you put out so much good content and I'm a fan. And you're also an expert, uh, as everybody knows, on the Manufacturing Masters platform. And that's why when you put out recently your fantastic newsletter from Windbound, if, if you listening or watching this are not already subscribed, you should. Um, and I'm sure you can do that over at windbound.com. But your most recent issue just lit me up. It was like it was like a brick to the head, but also things I already know and practice. Mm -hmm. But I thought, ooh, this is such a great topic. And I know most manufacturers are not practicing this. So had to get you on here. And this is such a timely um not just topic, but sales tool. And I think that's what's going to be appealing to people is that, you know, you and I are marketers and content creators, but we're also both believers that you've got to de-silo, right? And combine right. your sales and marketing, have them working together. So we're both huge fans of not just marketing, you know, to hear ourselves talk, so to speak, or to, or it's definitely for the purpose of supporting sales. Absolutely. And serving Absolutely. the customer. Oh yeah, them. Yeah. <laughs> right? First and foremost, those, the customer, right. Those people we do this for. So <laughs> you talked about generating B2B leads on LinkedIn. And of course, my all my, you know, lights went off. Woo, yes, cuz I'm a firm believer. You and I both know it works. We preach it all the time. But you brought up a couple things that I think suck. People are sucking at on LinkedIn. And I want to go over a couple of those and not to be negative. This is this is like brick to the head to anybody listening. But then we're going to tell you, show you, guide you how to fix it because it's an easy fix. And you have this great approach called the referrals first approach. And I love that. So that's what I that's what we're going to talk about today 
is switching your mindset, right? Whether you're a salesperson and you're on LinkedIn, you're active, you're um, a marketer, you're a company owner, like this episode is for you. And you brought up a couple things that I think are really important. These are the kind of suck hole kind of things. Okay. So most salespeople aren't necessarily content creators. Right. We've heard them tell us this. So this is not our opinion. It's them saying, I don't like this. I'm not good at it. I don't want to do it. So I avoid it. And the other thing is the cold, I call it spamalata, which I've mentioned to you before, is not as tasty as a pina colada. It actually tastes awful and nobody wants it. And that's what's happening with Sales Navigator is people going in for the sell, right? Going in for the kill. And it's it's turning people off. Right. Working against you. Anything else you want to add? Because I want to start going over your number one, two, three. Let's see, you have four steps. Okay. And before we jump into, I think, these two things a little more in depth, anything you want to throw in? Because I'm doing a lot of talking and I we want to hear from you. <laughs> well, I, I want to go back to that salespeople are not content creators. Um we, you and I both know a couple of salespeople who are incredible content creators. I'm going to point out Chris Lukey, mm-hmm. um, Jake, Jake Hall. Hall. Yep. And the, there and are the, the I call them the unicorns. And um, they are, they are amazing. Let me say this. They are amazing salespeople. They are amazing marketers. They are just amazing people and very natural marketers and natural salespeople. But they are incredible content creators and they generate a lot. And um, I just, you know, when I started to work, we work with small, we work with manufacturers who don't have a big market. They, some of them don't have a marketing team at all. Mm -hmm. They might just be a sales driven organization and just have a sales leader. And so, you know, they, they have these these teams and they're salespeople and they're not J. Call, they're not Chris Lukey. They don't like content creating. They don't feel comfortable doing it. And I, I mentioned in the article what I think the difference is, is that marketers are mass communicators. We are comfortable creating messaging. Salespeople are interpersonal communicators. That's their strength. That's where they're amazing. And you go to a party with a salesperson and a marketer, who do you really want to hang out with? It's usually going to be the salesperson. salesperson. They're the life of the party. They're super fun. They engage you. The marketer is probably sitting in the corner quietly, somewhat meekish, um, fun to chat with, mm-hmm. but you got to get in there. So yeah, that's the salesperson's strength and uh, is that interpersonal and they're not the messenger. So um, what we just, you know, I think marketers need to get that through their, really have to realize, take a look at their team. I mean, you might have a unicorn there. Great. Feed them, help them do everything. But you're going to have a lot of people are just going to be like, no, I, I don't want to do this. I don't want right. to create my own stuff. And you need to realize that. Comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. They're just, they don't want to do it. So what are you going to do as a marketer to help them engage on LinkedIn. Yes, excellent points and and you're spot on. Well, you mentioned you in your article you mentioned that number 1, cold outreach is ineffective on LinkedIn. I'm pretty sure everybody listening or watching is going, yeah. <laughs> I I really I'm amazed how much it happens. And it almost makes me think that, gee, is that statement really true? Because everybody's doing it. <laughs> it's like, is somebody breaking through or they just... That's what I want to know. Is I know. Is working and it, for anybody? Is it like, same thing with like email spam. It's like, okay. 
is it working? And and even if it is, is that really how you want to live your life? I mean, do you want to just who's doing it? Who is doing all that? All right, hire some. I don't know, some, um, you know, virtual assistant to go pound in somebody. Are you making good relationships? I, it just boggles my mind. I'm like, doesn't seem sustainable or fun or yeah. effective. So I don't know. I don't, and I don't see anybody out there. I mean, of course I get spam from people who say this works right? in which I turn into Marcus spam. So I just don't think it's, realistic and I've tried it. I've tried a lot of cold outreach mm -hmm. and uh, just get frustrated and tired and I hate it. It's not, it's not fun. And it's um, yeah, there's just a lot of sweat equity in it and it just doesn't feel very genuine. And that's the exact opposite of all the manufacturers that we know and work with and love and admire. They're genuine. So yeah. it, like, to me, it goes against the grain. And, you know, you mentioned that in, in your article that there are over a billion users on LinkedIn. Okay. So it's the perfect place to cultivate good B2B leads. I mean, obviously. And there's enormous amounts of Intel. And then you have Sales Navigator if you want to use it, right? You've got this tool. So... You talk about the 95-5 rule that 95% of people, however, of these billion are not ready to buy right now. Yeah. Maybe 5% are. So when we send cold, spammy crap, it gets treated as spam. You think Sales Navigator is is like cool with it, but it's really not. It doesn't come across well if you don't know them, they don't know you, you've never had any kind of interaction with them. Like it's cold as hell <laughs> <laughs> and it's there's no getting around it. And cold invites have also been abused, which we see every single day. And, mm -hmm. and are all tired of it. And then you talk about the pitch slap, which I laughed out loud. Yeah. Because, you know, nobody wants to be pitch slapped, right? Right. It doesn't feel good. No. Um, And you also brought up something that I think is really important. And I, I'm a big fan of touch points, right? I created the periodic table of customer touch points for a reason. And... You talk about needing an average of eight touch points to make a sale. Absolutely. So why would you risk screwing it up on the first touch point? Right. You're you're out of the game. Yeah. You're taking just, yourself out of the game and you're just diving back into that sea. And, and especially, I think, in manufacturing, Allison, where there isn't a billion leads. You know, we have a lot of tight niche communities, tight niches, and it's really about relationships. And and I guess that that is ultimately what kind of takes me back to this whole referral first philosophy is that long before the internet came along and LinkedIn and social media, this is how salespeople built their you know, their business. And yeah, sure, there's a lot of cold calling. There was a lot of knocking on doors. Absolutely. But there's a lot of salespeople who built their empire through referrals. It's how I built my company through referrals. Yeah, you too. Obviously, we are using social media. We are we are getting our name out there so people know us because remember in sales, people only do business if they know <laughs> you, like you, and trust you. So you have to get the marketing out there to get your, yourself known. But um, you know, you you have to have this referral network is how I did it, how you did it, and 
I was just like, why, why doesn't that work anymore? Why should we just kick that to the curb? Because it is still working. Why don't I just lean into that and really try and build a system around that and encourage that instead of using this LinkedIn, you know, the cold calling uh, approach that a lot of people do in this spam a lot, like you mentioned. Yeah. Well, and think about it. It's it's like when I go to a trade show, I ask a manufacturer, I go up to their booth, I'm chatting with them and I say, how many, how many new customers would pay for, for this show, for you to have been at this show? And every single time they go, one. I'm like, exactly. So I liken the reality of what I know to be true with what you just said. We're not looking for a billion leads. We're not even looking for thousands, probably. If if it were me, I steer my manufacturers to look for a hundred quality, right? High quality leads ideal fit like see now oh now we're narrowing it down and this makes messaging easier right this makes marketing to support sales easier right. so i think putting that into perspective is really important because a lot of times people get all caught up in numbers right oh i made 500 calls this week well i mean maybe you did great but I think you and I are fans of helping people work smarter, not harder, and in a more sustainable way, and in a way that produces um, just greater rewards, right? Just richer, denser, better relationships, long-term, um, you know, because I call it, it's the sales cycle, but it to me, it's like continuous. You know, you bring up a good point about uh, activity and number of calls, and I touch on it a bit in the article, but it I, I've been thinking about that more and more because I am keep trying to refine the metrics on this approach and how am I going to track activity. And I started to think about what I always tell young parents about how to be a good parent. I always tell them, look, I don't, I, any parent who is truly honest will say, I don't really know what I'm doing out here. <laughs> <laughs> right. But the one thing I think you can give as a parent to be effective is time. Mm. If you can give time to your kids, you will be loved by your kids and you will be an effective parent. That's my one piece of advice that I give out started to think about that in relation to what we're talking about. And I'm starting to change my activity, air quotes, <laughs> around not recording the number of comments that I make or the number of invites I send. I'm thinking in terms of half hour blocks or hour blocks. I'm mm -hmm. going to spend an hour and I'm chunking my time to be efficient. I'm going to spend a half hour commenting. That's all I'm going to do. Some of it's going to be longer. Some of it might not, might just take a one line zinger. Yeah. <laughs> but if I set the time aside, I will be productive. I have a feeling I will be very productive and I won't be trying to go those, get those notch marks. Right. And instead, I'm going to get a quality amount of time with my prospects, just like. They'll love me like my kids do. I hope they do. So, yeah, very uh, true. Well, we're going to talk more about that in a minute. Okay, I'm glad you I'm brought it up. The now. Gun. No, no, no. It's it's you've it's a great model, and I think a lot of people listening will go, "Huh, I could do that." Like that seems doable. Right. So, I think one thing I wanted to cover quickly is you talk about this as a number two in your article that. You know, but the salespeople aren't necessarily content creators. So is it okay or enough for them to just share their company's content? 
And the, the answer is no, right? Right. That's easy to do. And yet so many salespeople don't even do that. Right. They don't even do that. They honestly, I think salespeople have no idea what to do on LinkedIn, on Sales Navigator. They know there are a million things they could do, mm -hmm. maybe even they should do, but they don't know where to start. So like any of us, they just do nothing. And for right. the marketer, yeah, the marketer who is um, maybe a bit more activity driven than the salesperson and compensated for activities. Right. So the marketer is compensated. How many times did you get a newsletter out? How many LinkedIn posts did you publish? They might not be compensated based on revenue. And they're focused on like, why won't you just share this? Right. It's so easy to do. Well, one, the salesperson isn't getting compensated for activity. They don't see the tie into the revenue. Mm -hmm. They don't see the value. And I don't blame them. You know, why should you just share this without, you know, just share it with a, you know, that that seems like what most marketers just want them to do. Just share it. You know, where is that going to get anybody? And it's, where is it going to get the salesperson? They don't see it. So I, I, I kind of understand why they don't do it. I think some training, you know, just some um, training by companies around this, like, if you don't know what to do, there are a lot of really smart people, consultants, et cetera. It doesn't have to cost a ton of money either, but just get a little bit of training for your team to say, this is why we want to do this all together as a company. And this is what's in it for you as a salesperson to build your network. So I think when the value is clear, the decision is easy, but I think you're very spot on because I see this happen all the time. And, you know, you can, you can, the marketing manager can ask employees to, to do it and they'll do it sometimes, but they're just like, I'm so busy. I'm busy doing other things. I don't have time for that. And I think it's uh, interesting, which again, we'll talk about more in a minute. When you adopt a model of how to use LinkedIn and why and what's the value, I think you'll have a mindset shift. You listening or watching this. So here's a solution. Let's just, let's just give the listeners a solution for the sharing that might make the salesperson understand the value of just doing that. So you get a great company post, you think it has value. Let's say you have some referral sources that you really like, uh, but you know, you have a vendor that you work with who, you know, you sell water bottles and you have a vendor who can print on the water bottles. Right. So you guys work together. You you've got a great company post about uh, the effectiveness of the sustainability of water bottles in the environment. So you put it out there. Now you tag your referral source buddy mm -hmm. yep. and you put a comment, put your own insights about why you think this is a great post, put that out there give it a little juice beyond just sharing it because Google or uh, LinkedIn, sorry, doesn't like that. But you tag your referral buddy and maybe a couple other people. Now, there, you've got this relationship, hopefully with them, where you've said, you know what, I'm going to share content with you and I'll then tag it. So you can, can you share, you know, give it some love, put mm -hmm. some comments on it because then it's going to get in front of his network. Right. Then he can do the same thing back to you and you guys can promote each other's message. And when you're promoting his company, people are going to listen to you because you don't work for that company. Right. And your people in your network are going to get introduced to him. So that might be a simple way where you're tying it in with the sales team and showing them 
how it can benefit them. And they actually have a tool now, that content, that can help their referral source and help them help that referral source. That might Absolutely. just be an example right there. Well, it's like the ripple effect. You know, when you, and, and I've had to teach clients this when they want to understand, you know, well, what is it that you guys are doing for us? How are you doing it? Or if I'm training a marketing manager and they're going to take over, you know, and do it themselves, um, they usually don't understand the value of tagging or even well, what does that even mean? So I have to explain. Right. This is how you tag a company. This is how you tag a person. This is what hashtags are actually for. This is how you find out which hashtags have more followers, right? And those are just like wayfinders. But when you when you show up on someone else's radar, my gosh, maybe they have 10,000 followers. So now you've just spread this message. It it just and it's oh sorry, it it's all these ripples, right? Yeah. They're happening and pretty soon you know, it gets pretty large and I think you're just helping yourself and your company or your salespeople or your vendor. Everybody's rising up together and it doesn't cost anything, you know, to, win, to do some win, of these simple things. Win, 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 win yeah. all the way. Or win bound as it were. Ah, um, go. <laughs> but in digging into the referrals first approach, I think this is really important. There are four steps. And so if you're listening to this or watching, you probably want to write this down before you run over and uh, subscribe to Greg's newsletter. Um, and read this for yourself, but just make some notes. So you talk about this requiring a bit of a mindset shift. And I agree with you. Um, from the immediate LinkedIn is my immediate leads tool to LinkedIn is my referral building tool. And I love how you worded that because it's so true. So, okay. So we just have a little bit of a mindset shift, which is going to change our intention which is going to change our actions and our outcome. So step one, <clears throat> and you listening, if you are a salesperson, this is straight up your alley. If you're a leader, share this with your team, right? Whoever does your marketing or your sales. Step one, leave a comment. We all hear that all the time. Oh, comment on other people's things. Okay. But include insights. And you, my friend, are very good at this. It, and what that means, though, is it takes just a little extra time. Like, you can tell you don't spend five seconds going thumbs up and you moved on. You'll probably do a thumbs up or one of the other emojis. I love the heart. I know. It's so surprising. Um, you know, loved it. But then when you comment... You know, it's so easy to go, oh, well, I'm in, I'm in a hurry right now. Well, if they're in that half an hour chunk that you talked about before, which we're going to talk about more in a minute, you've got that time. I set this time aside You're and good. I'm commenting and I'm going to just, I'm just going to add an extra sentence to, uh -huh. hey, this is a great topic. Maybe you can add some insight of your own to share your thought leadership to spark an idea, to maybe you can ask a question. And I think that that's really important. And would you agree that it just, just takes that little bit of extra time and which could be 60 seconds? Absolutely. Let's go back to what salespeople are good at, their interpersonal relationship people. So we're talking about leaving comments on other people's content. We know you're not a content creator, but every salesperson understands or should understands their product, their industry. They have opinions about them. They have a point of view. They have expertise. You have things to share. A salesperson will talk all day long at a trade <laughs> show. They're really about good anything. at it. <laughs> They're really good at it. 
because they're responding to conversations and they're fantastic at it. I love salespeople. They're the most I favorite do. organisms in the world. Um, <laughs> other than our chihuahua is pretty cool sometimes too, but um, so you can comment, you can respond and you have opinions. So just be yourself mm -hmm. and, and leave a comment and use your interpersonal skills. If you don't know the person, take a look at their profile, understand a little bit about who they are, or just leave an opinion that shows your insights. But take a minute. You know how to connect with people. You know how to push buttons. Mm -hmm. Use your skill at being an interpersonal communicator and just leave a comment that you know is probably going to touch somebody and, and, and motivate them. Yeah, I love that. It, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, you don't have to go into detail and, and leave war and peace. It, you know, it's just think of it again. This is that mindset shift. Think of it as I'm a great communicator, right? So just think about it that way. I'm just commenting. I'm just giving an opinion. I'm leaving them with a little insight. I'm sharing how that aligns with, oh, how we solve problems too. Or I'm asking a question. Um, I'm also a fan of, you know, irreverence. And sometimes it's fun to poke the bear. I think as long as you're respectful and and it's, you know, in context with what's going on. I've seen some fantastic conversations when that happens. Oh, yeah. Uh, and it's so fun, too. Uh, our mutual friend, Dan Bigger, put out a kind of a hilarious post today. Like, once you kind of get in a community... This is the fun part of this. It's this is like positive social media. You start yes. to make friends. I mean, like you and I have become friends on LinkedIn. Kurt Anderson, Chris Lukey, you know, there's this nice this little whole... community. Yeah. And uh, Dan Bigger put out a post today. He's at he's working now with his wife and he's like, I'm working so much with my wife. I see her every day. She's like the boss of my company. I, I actually think I'm becoming my wife. Can somebody <laughs> out there help me? And, and I just left, you know, a one line comment. I just said, Dan, I think this is a step in the right direction and you should go with it. Right. Just... It, it, it can be, I think the humor is one of my favorite things on LinkedIn. Absolutely. Because it's, uh, it's just genuine. Yeah. You know, it's people being people and... I think we've in our little manufacturing community, um, everybody understand, like we're not trying to sell each other anything. We're trying to be of service. We're trying to be a good friend. We're trying to be a supporter. So as a salesperson, that's what you're trying to be as well. Right. So again, maybe it's just that little mindset shift uh, that would help you out. You talk about step two, Sending warm invites. Do you want to talk about that for a sec? Well, if you comment and get on somebody's radar, or even if you go and comment on somebody else's post and you see somebody on that who also commented on that, you have something in common then. Right. That's what I consider a warm invite. And I, I will send something out like I saw you left a comment on Dan Bigger's Becoming a, His Wife post. That was hilarious. He, I also, you you know, you look like a kindred spirit. Let's connect. Yeah, just simple and genuine. Boy, you you know, you've got something in common. Make a connection that way and, and build, you know, it's the first step in the relationship. So. That's what I look at. at um, and if I leave in comments on their post, that's just an automatic yeah. connect with them as well. Yeah, super easy way to build that connection. It's almost instantaneous. And it, it's this may sound corny, but um, well, the, the, the first thing I want to add to that is absolutely do that regularly. Mm -hmm warm invites are a must and they're easy uh -huh. Two, please dear god do not follow that up with trying to sell somebody something yeah. at all i don't try to sell me a 
anything. I don't want your PDF. I don't want, think of it like dating. Like we just met. I really haven't even asked you out yet. I'm certainly not going to ask you to sleep with me on the first, you know, I use that as an example because if you think about it in that context, you'd be like, oh yeah, that'd be inappropriate. So it's like, take up, just take your time, slow down. This person doesn't even really know you yet. And this is the corny thing that I used to do. And I still do it sometimes because I want to let people know I'm real. This is a real, um, and someone that I used to work with encouraged me to do this. And at the time I thought she was nuts. And she says, just trust me. I said, okay. So I would send the warm invite and as kind of a PS, I'd say, by the way, I hope you love cheese as much as I do. Okay. Just a silly little, I had more people when I was really working on building my, my following and my connections, more people had so much fun with that. And they would just say, uh, Gouda of you to mention, or, you know, that there would be like a, Ooh, I really love blah, blah, blah. And then I love a little wine with that. Well, you know, I'm a wine girl. So then I'd comment back. It just started this little personal conversation. I didn't carry it on for, you know, for a long time, but it was just a little icebreaker, you know? Um, and then the second thing that I would do is I would ask them if they wanted to play the three question lightning round. I and I would say, and I tied it to marketing to brands. Cause that's, you know, obviously something I love. And I said, number one, Coke or Pepsi. Number two, Microsoft or Apple. Okay. Uh, I can't even remember what number three was. And then four was a bonus question, spreadsheet, spreadsheets or instincts. Bailed. I think I had two people out of a couple thousand that said they didn't have time for this. Like this was silly. And I thought, well, you're not my people then. Bye. Mm -hmm. And the other thousand or more that played along it was fantastic it told me something about them so my the method to my madness was this was a psychological test right a little insight into okay how does this person's brain work are they more maybe left brain right brain rational wow. thinker creative um and then tying it in with marketing i had huge success with that so anybody listening feel free to steal it but Oh, I'm fun. totally stealing that. I mean, I think those two comments you left right there are are brilliant. And I actually, in total honesty, Allison, I that's something I struggle with is because I'm I'm like any other salesperson slash you know agency owner. I want to get yep. to the sale, and what you you said there takes a lot of discipline i think but it's also brilliant in that it sounds super fun mm -hmm. and you're also sharing a, a lot about yourself and what kind of person you are yeah and you like you don't want to be that i'm the salesperson you know like when i do that sometimes if i'm here's my company here's what i do i'm like this is just this is gonna get shot down yeah, i know it's gonna feel get shot. right doesn't feel right so yeah. thank you for sharing that Wow. Yeah. yeah. I'm telling you, I, I was, um, f consistent. I was gonna say fervently. I don't know what the right word is. I consistently did that for several years and it paid off in spades because in multiple ways it was number one, it was fun. It let people know, like you said, a lot about me and my company and, and I never followed it up with trying to sell them anything until huh. multiple communications later um you know hopefully they're seeing you show up elsewhere so maybe uh -huh. you're showing up on a podcast maybe you're writing a blog post maybe you're you're quoted in a blog post you know Good. if you're not the content creator there are plenty of opportunities for you to be showing up in other places that's probably a whole nother episode for you and i but right anyway I'm a fan of icebreakers. So I think if you can, you know, it's kind of the what's next because I have several friends that are agency owners and one of them, she's like, 
God, she goes, I really struggle with the what's next. What do I give them? Mm-hmm. How do I, like, I, I get frozen. You know, mm-hmm. oh, they connected. Uh, We started a little banter, but then I'm like, I don't know. And she's a marketer. Mm-hmm. And I said, I totally get it because we're all mm-hmm. just human beings. And mm-hmm. yeah, ultimately, you're trying to build a relationship. Maybe you're trying to get a referral. But that's the thing is when you change your perspective and you come at it from a, um, you call it, you call it in step three, which we're getting to, um, being the go giver. Mm -hmm. And I love that. So again, thinking of it that way, how could I, what could I give? And maybe it's just a little fun game, you know, to, to break the ice, but. Mm, I love that. I'm yeah. going to insert that into the post. If you don't mind, I'm quoting you. Those. I think you really... should quote me because I was not quoted in your current article. I was going to bring that up to you. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, please feel free. Um, yeah. And, and I'm a fan of sharing. So we're sharing information. We're sharing tactics. That's yeah. That's what makes the world go round. But this is perfectly segues into step three. You talk about then meeting and adding value. And I love, so, so we've got step one, step two, step three. So now step three is to actually meet them, Mm -hmm. ask them to offer an introduction to someone else that they may like to get to know, you know, that's already in your network, Mm -hmm. um, link, send them a link to some helpful content or again, not something necessarily that you want them to buy, but hey, I know you're probably struggling with X if you're like any of the other salespeople I know or any of the other you know X Y Z people I know. I thought this may be helpful. Um, you talk about sharing their content. I think that's an excellent way to build on these relationships is by demonstrating through an act of service or giving and giving props to something that they're doing. And you also mention um, posting about them and you have, you do this all the time. And I I try to do it as well is, you know, kind of give a hat tip right to somebody else and share something that they posted or, you know, and be sure to tag them and their company. How, what has that been like for you? Have you, you've had positive experiences, right? Doing that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I just got a referral the other day from someone I did that with. It's a, it's, it's nice to do that. I, I, you know, as a content creator, this is where sales and marketing could, or, or the sales team could lean into their marketing staff and yeah, integrate and say, Hey, I'd like to give this person some love. Can you help me a little bit with some graphics? Make yeah. this look nice. And I'll, you know, write a little blurb for me or, you know, help me in some way. Yeah. But um, I, I, what I was going to add to that is that on Sales Navigator, you can set up custom lists and you can have, so I set up a list called referrals and I put my referrals in there. And then there is an alert function where you can go in and see who's posted. So I just go in and whenever my referrals put anything, my referrals put anything, Brilliant. I am on it and I am commenting. And going back to the the daily activities, that's that's one of my things when it's comment day, I go in and I go through my referral list. Now, the, another tactic that you can use then is once you comment on your referrals posts and leave a nice comment, hopefully that gets some traction and some other people comment. You can look at who else commented on it. And now that tactic we mentioned before, yep. hey, I saw you commented on Bob's post. Let's connect. That's yeah. how it's just that simple. I feel like so much of this activity is like could replace the old mindset of cold calling or you know sending out a gazillion emails to some random list that you bought not saying that those things can't be effective but 
it just seems like such a better use of time and we're getting to the end of our time we actually went over but i think this is very important and and i i figured we would there's just too much good stuff quickly you talk about the daily i i call i decided to call what you came up with the daily 30. oh and you talk about and feel free to uh you can tm that that's all yours the daily 30 you talk about breaking it up in 30 minute chunks and maybe even breaking it up further where monday is commenting day tuesday invite day i love this so smart like right can you just feel the stress that just kind of you know just kind of melted off because now i'm eating the elephant in small bites i've got the dedicated time mm -hmm. i don't care if you spent 15 minutes but i think 30 is appropriate um especially for because it's easy to go down a rabbit hole mm -hmm. but if monday is commenting day it's okay I'm only focused on commenting. I am not going to go down the other rabbit hole. Um, I think you could even spend one of your um, days on your daily 30 just consuming. Yeah. Right? Maybe today I'm just going to consume. Maybe I'll make some notes if I happen to see some different people I want to follow back up with on invite day. You know, Boy, however you want to do it. That's but, brilliant. I, I'm going to put that in there too. You're <laughs> I'm gonna have to rewrite the damn thing. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, you, the, you, the, you made the, the point. Bones. The the point about the segmenting and chunking it is, if you try and do commenting and inviting on the same day, because believe me, I've tried to do it. Yep. Do. One of the two is going to get shortchanged, and it's always going to be who comes second, because once you start commenting, you're going to be like, man, I'm into this. This is cool. I'm yep. in a groove and it, your mindset is on commenting and you're not going to want to leave it to invite. And suddenly you're going to be 40 minutes in and 20 minutes to invite. And then you're just going to be, I don't know. Okay. I, now I'm rushed and you might not even do it. You might just be, get busy. So the other, the other way is inviting is a different, sending out invites is a different mindset because mm -hmm. You've got to go back through the posts you commented on. You've got to do some research. You've got to look at who commented on. You might bring their profile in the sales navigator and see if they're a good fit. Learn a little bit about their company. So there's a little more research to go on. And then you have to leave like a personalized note. So there's different things. And it's hard to switch gears between those two. So that's why I broke them up into two different days. But I love the just sit and read and you could probably bookmark that stuff in LinkedIn or whatever you use to keep track of stuff. And maybe that's your Friday activity. Yeah. Uh, I well, love it. And, and, you know, I may sound smart, but I tell you, like you, I've done a lot of trial and error. Right. And I'm not perfect at this by any stretch. And I find myself, I think the reason that this struck me so much, your, your 30 minute chunking is that. Uh, it's real easy for me and and what I feel like is a monkey brain to like, you know, I'll do these things just back and forth, back and forth. Oh, I this per I'm gonna invite and then I go back and I comment and then I and afterward I'm like, okay, my my brain hurts and I don't know was that even very effective. Like it just seems it's a little crazy. Right. So that's I've experienced that. I still do it. Yeah. Fairly stressful. regularly, and I'm working on it, but I think the chunking will help that. Yeah, you're you're multitasking. You're the what is it? The frenzied mindset um, yeah. that Cal Newport talks about. Um, that's it's stressful. It's, it leaves yeah. you exhausted. Well, and I don't think it's as productive as doing it the other way, right? Where you've blocked your time, you're not being. Um, distracted mm -hmm. and your focus is just so um deep and mm -hmm. yeah I, I i i'm i'm a i'm a work in progress but i can tell you for sure that art art this is this is excellent advice from you and just quickly integrating with your marketing team and i think this is very important you talk about co-creating content for your sales team to post mm -hmm excellent idea 
That's easy peasy for the marketer. Um, running LinkedIn ads to drive awareness for the sales folks, right? To um, widen your sphere of influence and that marketing can share, and this is super important, marketing should share what's working with sales and sales should share what's working with marketing. Absolutely. I want everybody listening or watching to hear what we just said. It's it's crucial. Have everybody work together, even if it's once a month, because that's the only, I see it still all the time, the silos. And then, you know, marketing doesn't even know if sales is, is appreciating what they're doing or if it's effective and vice versa. And, um, and I think the whole point of all of this is what you talk about every day. It's building trust faster, right? Because like you always say, when people know you, like you, and trust you, they're going to be more apt to buy from you, to work with you. And it's going to happen faster. Absolutely. So... Thank you for this article that you wrote. Thank you for your brilliance and your experimentation and um, really just for showing up. Like you've, I've seen you grow and adapt and change so much in the last couple of years. And it's just such a cool thing to watch as a colleague and a friend. Um, you know, we cheer each other on, we inspire each other and I'm just really grateful for you being a part of this manufacturing audience. Oh, thank you, Allison. That's really kind of you. Um, you know, right back at you. You inspire me. You are very, uh, you, you kind of remind me sometimes I feel like uh, as digital marketers, we get into the weeds and you are always pushing the emotional button and making this stuff fun. And making this like the yeah, we should be having fun with this. And you you keep that in front of me and you remind me. I mean, just your tips today about the icebreaker. I've actually been struggling with this. And I reached out to another salesperson. No, yeah. And like I this honestly, sometimes, you know, the universe lines up for you. And uh I totally appreciate this conversation more than you know. This has been great. Thank you so much for yeah. having me and sharing this with your audience. It, it's my pleasure. Um, and thank you for spending time with me and with our audience. And I just want to tell everybody listening or watching this, you have choices. You could spend your time listening to uh, probably a million, literally other podcasts or watching a million or billion other things on YouTube. Um, but you chose to invest some time today in yourself in your business and spend some time with Greg and I. And um, we're just really appreciative. And we want you to know, you probably don't hear it enough, but you as a manufacturer, salesperson, marketer, leader, what you're doing matters. So keep going and we will see you next time. If you're not already, subscribe to the Manufacturing Masters podcast on Apple Music or Spotify. And for a deeper dive, head on over to manufacturing-masters.com. It's everything they never taught you in school.